My name is Holly Carroll. I'm a biologist with a passion for the great apes. But they're all endangered, and we're losing them much too fast. This forest loves forever. And I wanted people to see for themselves what's happening. How amazing is this? With a film crew, I traveled to some of the world's most remote forests to be the first to film all the apes in 3D in the wild. Looks like the plane's stuck. It was a daunting and sometimes perilous adventure, but always rewarding. Come with me now for a behind the scenes trip of a lifetime as I go walking with the great apes. This is what I love about Camp Leakey, is that you can have a wild-born ex-captive orangutan sitting nearby. You can have bush pigs roaming freely, monkeys, gibbons. It's an excellent place to see wildlife up close and personal. The orangutans are only found on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. And Camp Leakey is where one of the longest-running research projects on orangutans began. Camp Leakey was founded by an inspirational woman. Her name is Dr. Barute Galdikas, and she came to Borneo over 40 years ago to study orangutans in the wild. But she learned that many orangutans were being orphaned by logging and sold as pets. So she rescued them and rehabilitated them. In those early days, she served as sort of a surrogate mother, caring for them day and night until they could be released back into the forest. She was truly a pioneer in their conservation. But a lot has changed. Look at this. <laughs> That's one of the changes. That's a wild orangutan who's sitting on the dock. I had a dream, and that dream was to study wild orangutans and to learn more about them than any other person and to share this knowledge with future generations so that orangutans uh, would be better understood. Over the last 41 years, we have released over 400 wild-born ex-captive orangutans back to the wild. Despite these efforts, the problem is growing because we're losing forests to put the orangutans back into, and the rate of forest destruction is unsustainable. Well, that's a very good point. Orangutans are so much on the brink of extinction that if we don't change the way the world thinks and operates about them, then orangutans will go extinct. And the funny thing, it's not for lack of caring. People do care, but it's translating that caring into action. Exactly. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to do here. It's very important for people to experience things for themselves. When you actually come into the presence of a great ape, you make a connection. And you carry that connection with you the rest of your life.
The fact that a wild orangutan just brought her infant that close to me is so trusting. I won't forget that. And here, every tourist gets to have their own special experience. Orangutans feed mainly on fruit, but because it's the dry season, food is more scarce now. By providing a feeding station, Dr. Barute ensures the ex-captive orangutans get plenty to eat. Normally, orangutans are solitary, so you'd never see a gathering of this many animals in one place. And because they were once captive, they're more used to humans. So it's one of the few places in the world where tourists can have such close encounters with apes. I find it amazing to think as I look at these animals that Barute carried them around as infants, kept them in her hut in the forest as if they were her children. They made messes in the house and destroyed her things and yet clung to her for support and the love their wild mom would have given them. She would walk through the jungle with them, clinging to her body, while she took her research data on the wild ones. A generation later, they're grown and wild once again, many of them with their own infants and grandchildren. But though these re-released animals are doing well, many more become orphans every year, and the scale of the problem is much more than one woman could possibly handle on her own. So she has a fully staffed care center in Borneo, and there are over 300 animals here. <laughs> Orangutan babies would normally stay with their mother for up to eight years. So orphans need extensive hands-on care. Putting milk and food into these round tummies every day for so many years is expensive. And places like this rely on donations. These guys were so endearingly human-like and intelligent, too. One of them let me know how he felt about sharing his lunch. The babies are eating boiled potatoes, and it is about lunchtime, so I thought I'd just have one. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Barute is hopeful that each of these orphans can one day be returned to the forest, like those around Camp Leakey, who are thriving. One individual in particular stole my heart. Her name is Siswi. How 
her the ambassador for Camp Lake Heat. She's doing a really great job of making me feel welcome. It's really hot out. Maybe she just wants to protect herself from the sun. Or maybe she likes the fact that we think it's the most cute thing we've ever seen and we're photographing her. I'm pretty sure she has lots of party tricks. These ex-captives may now live in the forest, but because of the bond they have with Barute, many of them return to camp when she's here, just to be close to her. But they're not allowed inside the house anymore. issue affecting orangutan survival today revolves around commercial palm oil production. It possibly makes them produce more fruit. The problem with palm oil concessions is that they typically totally clear cut the forest and they often burn it. And if you are burning a uh, cut forest on tropical peat soils, which may extend five, six, ten meters deep, you are causing a holocaust of fire uh, that goes as carbon into the world's atmosphere. And these fires are raging in forests all over Sumatra. A local conservationist named Anto wanted me to see the extent of the problem. Nothing really prepared me for seeing this. This forest allows forever. Yeah. After the logging and fires comes massive plantations of palms. For me, growing up in Alaska, the image of the palm tree always conjured up a beautiful tropical oasis. But as Anto drives me through miles of endless palm plantations as far as the eye can see, it's clear that all over Indonesia, the wild forest ecosystems that took millennia to form are being replaced with this plant. And wild animals, particularly orangutans, can't live here. The trees produce palm nuts every two weeks, which is what makes them such a cash crop. These nuts are pressed into oil, which is found in so many products that we consume every day, like sweets and chocolate, toothpaste and cosmetics, and it's even touted as a biofuel. We in the West are driving the huge demand for palm oil. But we can use our buying power to send a message that we won't continue to use products that contain palm oil until it's produced sustainably. But that's easier said than done, especially when you go to buy your favorite candy bar and find out it has palm oil in it. The practice of growing palms could be sustainable if planted on existing farmland but it is the unregulated industrial scale destruction of pristine wild forest that's the problem. Mm. Often the palm plantations fragment the forests and an orangutan will leave the forest looking for food. 
To the plantation owner, the orangutan is nothing more than a pest, and if they wander in, it can cost them their lives. I'm 52. 22, 22. Yeah. 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 They shot him 62 times with an air rifle. But then I think what they've done is they've shot him in the face and realized that he was still alive and they've decided to go down shooting the genitals as well. Oh, God. So this happens a lot? Uh, this is kind of standard procedure, yeah. I mean, every single orangutan infant that we get here, the mother has probably been shot in a very similar way or beaten and clubbed. Oh, God. It's thanks to Dr. Ian Singleton and his quarantine center that Sumatran orangutans attacked in this way have a place to go where they can receive the life-saving surgeries and medical care they need. Once they've recovered, he gets them back into the wild as quickly as possible. He not only does these hands-on interventions, he also lobbies the government to protect their natural habitats and has secured 10,000 hectares of jungle where displaced orangutans can safely be re-released. For the younger orphans, the skills they need to survive in the wild are competitiveness, nest building, and agility. And he keeps them in these socialization cages so they can learn from each other. Once they're ready to be released, they'll go in small groups because the buddy system gives them a better chance at survival. releases them at a remote site called Jantho, and that was our next stop. So, um, these guys have loaded the vehicles up. We're gonna take off. Go to Jantho. I'm getting in the orange one. It's a long journey on terrible roads, but that's good. The more remote the release site, the less likely the orangutans will come into contact with people. I wish I were a more supportive bra, I can tell you that one. <laughs> Pretty rough road. This is actually the worst road we've been on in this whole shoot. Looks like the car in front's stuck. We arrived at Jantho, which is one of the reintroduction sites for the Sumatran orangutans. So it's nice to be back in some real forest. This is going to be nice. And I hear a river, and I can't wait to jump in it. The orangutans spend a few days in transition cages to get used to their new forest surroundings before they're released. Today's the big day for the the young female named Luna was held in captivity for nearly six years under appalling conditions. But because of the care and treatment Ian and his staff gave her, that tragedy ends today. It's a big moment. Yay. Okay, shall we? It looks ready to me. Shall we let her out now? Yeah, if you're ready, I'm ready. Okay. I'm pretty sure Luna's ready. <laughs> It's a big day. You ready for this? 
Let's go then, okay? She clearly, she passed the school. She's yeah. acting like a wild orangutan and... Straight out. Awesome. That's how it should be, right? Yeah. yeah. That's funny. It makes everything worthwhile, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fantastic feeling, you know, to realize that you've done this. You know, you, because of you, this animal can have another 40, 50 years as a life in the wild and produce its own babies and contribute to the future of the species and everything else. Luna's new freedom represents the dedication and hard work of inspirational people like Ian and Barute. And though we can't take away the emotional and physical scars of what she's endured, she gets to begin a new life. There's only hope if the average person starts caring and doing something to help the great apes. This little guy is so cute. I just want to hug and protect him forever, but if we're gonna save the orangutan as a species, we have to protect their forest. Isn't that right? <laughs>